Welcome back. <clears throat> Today we're going to take a look at using the gameplay ability system to handle our equipment stats. Um, so basically we're going to have stats on our equipment that gives like bonuses to strength, agility, things like that. And as we equip and unequip items, uh, the stats will change and it'll all happen through the gameplay ability system. Uh, we don't have an inventory system yet, we don't have an equipment system yet, so this is just kind of a prerequisite as we move toward that, uh, we'll eventually add those systems. Uh, we're going to do something a little bit different today, we'll see how well this goes. Uh, so normally I cr have a second project uh, that I basically do everything in advance, test it all out, fix the bugs and everything, and you know, sometimes it takes three, four, five hours, sometimes it takes 20 or 30 hours of working in that other project um, for each video that I record here. Uh, but I thought it might be kind of fun today to <laughs> attempt to do it without... So I have not done this in advance. I will be doing it for the first time in this project. We'll count how many times I have to pause and restart. Um, but uh, it should be a fun challenge. Um, so because I have not done this before, we need to do a little bit of planning. <clears throat> so what we're going to do, I think today, is we're going to have two slots. Um... And so I think we're going to have a head slot and a chest slot, uh, just for fun today. So we can have two. And we're going to create a tag, um, equipment, slots, head, and equipment, slots, chest. And only one will be able to be equipped uh at a time in each of those slots. So we're going to use gameplay tags. These will be two gameplay tags we create. We're going to create, um, we just need something to keep track of what the current stats are so we can test our values. So we're going to do um, simple character sheet. Um, let's do strength and um, dexterity. I think those are the two we're going to play with today. And we'll have a head slot item, a chest slot item, and let's see. Uh, we're going to need some, a gameplay ability. We're going to need an equip ability and an unequip ability. Um, this last one here, we'll use the tag slot um, as the way to remove. Mm, I can't send in. Unequipability. Okay. Yeah, we'll use the tag slot to remove, so it'll remove everything with that, and then we can re add it. And um, we're going to use a data table to keep our equipment stats. And I'll show to lift those up. Okay. So, probably the first thing we have to do here is build a simple character sheet. Uh, just so we can, just so we can uh, have something to track here. Um, okay, so let's go into our HUD font spell book. We're gonna create a new one. Character sheet. Uh, now I want to toggle project settings. Set up our inputs. What do we got here? We've got toggle skill tree, toggle spell book, and now we need toggle character sheet. And we want to have to see. Uh, that didn't work too well. But I'm pretty sure that C is already in use. If I remember right, it's in our player controller. There we go. Report character strength. We don't need this anymore. Bye bye. Instead, so we're on our input graph here. Come down here. Eh, we don't have one for this. Toggle skill tree widget. And now we're going to drop down toggle character sheet. 
do once. Flip flop. I don't. Well, yeah, we're gonna need to get we're gonna need to get values from here. So we're gonna refresh the values every time. I often create a function to do this, but um, okay. And in our UI modes, so we're gonna pull those down, but we need to build the widget. So let's go back to our HUD folder, character sheet, and new user interface widget blueprint. Okay. Going something real simple here. We'll drag a border. I usually go into image. I hate it when that happens. And we'll go down into, I guess, plugin content. I know it's in here. Texture, parchment paper. Do that to set it. Uh, I'm not sure where we want to put it yet on the screen. I don't know yet, so I think I'm going to start with centered. And um, let's see, we'll do maybe 400 wide by 300 tall. Yeah, it should work to start. So we'll do minus 200, minus 150. That should center it. We'll uh, drop a uh, the vertical box. And inside that vertical box, we're just going to go for simple here. Uh, so we're going to drop. Two horizontal boxes, and in each one, we'll put text, text, and another text, and another text. Okay, these ones are going to get turned into variables. This Ooh. one's going to be um, label strength, and this one's going to be. So this is turning into a variable, so it'll bind it. So it's going to be label dexterity, dexterity. and then we'll just uh, strength. And this one, dexterity, and let's default these to zero, they're going to get bound, they're going to get set. Cool. <clears throat> that should work for quick and dirty. Let's go here and create a widget. I'm in the third person player controller. And we're going to do a widget of type character sheet widget object reference. Character sheet now gives us this, and we can do add to viewport, and we can do remove, compare it. And this one's going to toggle here, and in between these is where we'll set the values. So probably we need to give ourselves a little more space. Is for the UI mode. Though it's just a display, we probably don't need to actually show the mouse cursor, but eh, whatever. Um, okay, so this has labels we need to set. Um, I always think that it's set, but it's not set. 
you actually get the value, a reference to it, and then do set text on it. That's going to be one of them. Label dexterity get and set text method on this one. And I'm going to need more room. And then we're going to use the um, ability system component. Ability system. Yeah. And um, get attribute. Okay. Uh, we don't want the base one. We actually want the derived one because we want all the equipment effects added into it. And we're going to do um, strength. Convert it, and then for this one, copy this, connect it to the ability system, and change this one from strength to dexterity, and this will convert. So now every time that we toggle it, it'll go pull the latest values, so it should refresh on its own. Okay, should be good. Um, Let's try it out real quick. Uh, okay, if you haven't, from last time, turn run dedicated server back on, uh, turn that back on. We had turned it off last time because we were doing some testing with the RPG World server. And uh, we had also been using a standalone game. We're going to go back to selected viewport, play an editor. And I'm hitting the C key. I see the problem. Yeah, what do you think we missed? Exactly. We uh, we did not um, load this character sheet widget. So we got to come over to uh, event graph. We got this huge thing here where we load them all. sheet widget and then we go down here and we'll do a set okay and I don't like playing at night go over here I think it's this one Time of day, and we'll zero. There that out. Okay, so now I'm pressing the C key. There we go. So 10 and 10. Those are our base numbers. Uh, that's what it's pulling from the database. And um, so that's what we're going to be looking to see. I'm just hitting the C key to toggle this back and forth. We probably didn't need the mouse. Eh, we might in the future, though. Might be things we click on on the character sheet, so we'll leave it for now. Okay, cool. Step one. Um, okay, so we did this part here. That's done. we got to create some tags. Grab this. And we're going to go over to the abilities system. And we're going to do uh, my gameplay tags table. And we're going to hit the plus. Locked. Locked head. Okay, you're going to hit another one. I'm just going over to my notepad, copying it in, but it's equipment.slots.chest. Tag for equipment chest slot. There we go. Those will handle. Those will handle our slots. Okay. 
Um, so we've got that. And um, now let's make let's make an equipment folder. Okay, and what we're going to be using to adjust those is we're going to be using a gameplay effect. And we have to create one for each of the slot types, even though they're going to kind of be a copy of each other. So we create one, and then we'll create another one. So we get a blueprint, gameplay effect. We don't want the template. We just want this one. Okay, and we're going to call this um, equipment head slot effect. Okay, and the way we're going to make this controllable is, uh, well first, we're gonna make it infinite, right? So once you put the equipment on, it doesn't expire. It stays until something changes it. And we wanna run modifiers, but we want these modifiers to be able to be controlled from the data table. We don't want to have to put fixed values. Otherwise, we'd have to create a gameplay effect for every one of our pieces of equipment. And you could do that if you want. Maybe if your game only has a couple pieces of equipment, you could do that. Well, I'm thinking like a thousand pieces of equipment, right? So I don't want to create a thousand effects that are all the same. So we're going to use the data table. So, okay, we've got strength and we've got dex and we're going to go into the modifier so we're adding, we're adding a value. We're going to go in here where it says scalable float, and we're going to say set by caller. And we're going to go here and say set by caller. And what that means is that you can send in the right value. Yeah. Now the problem is, problem is that we need tags. And I didn't create them yet. So actually... I'm going to close that because it'll have to reload to pick up the tags back over here. And I think you'll see... Do I have some set by caller? I don't. Not in this one. Okay. Well, you can do them however you want, but I like to do this. Set by caller. And this is going to be... Um, strength. And then another one. Set by caller. Dexterity. Unlike some of the other um, ones here, that the prefix actually does something, I just made that up. You can call that whatever you want. Uh, gameplay queue is special. You have to call that gameplay queue. Um, gameplay event is not special. I just made that up. Um, and this set by caller format I just made up. But gameplay queue is special. You must you must prefix it with gameplay queue or it won't work right. But the others are made up, whatever you want to call them. That works for me. And now I'm going to go back over to my effect. And... There's my set by caller. Actually, that is weird. I never seen. <laughs> Maybe they do need to be called set by caller. Okay, scratch that. Notice that the only ones showing are the set by caller. I didn't think that was a special one. Okay, I guess it is. So you do have to prefix it set by caller, or it won't show up in this list, which is odd because I never remember that happening before. Yeah. Anyway, it works. It would have been worse if. I used a different prefix and they didn't show up. Um, okay, so then basically what this is doing um, is it's using set by caller and it's adding whatever value. It means we're going to send it in, right? It means we're going to we're going to send a value, and I'll show you how we're going to do that. So we're going to create uh, we're going to create a new gameplay ability. going to use the default gameplay ability and call this equip item. Okay, we're here, we 
don't want that like that. We're going to make an instance per actor. No, local predicted. This is the default settings for just about all of them. OK, so what's going to happen here is that we're going to use something called apply gameplay effect to owner, but we're not going to use the effect. We're actually going to use effect spec to owner. This gives us some um, options the other one doesn't give us, and that's that we can build this effect handle. Uh, I think it's this one, make outgoing gameplay effect spec. It is. So here's where we choose our um, one. So we've got head lot effect. Okay, and what this lets us do is that we can uh, actually, you know what? Yeah. So there's a bit of a yeah. There's a bit of a problem here. We don't. Ah, we'll come back. To, we'll come back to that. So what this lets us do is we can. I think it's, I thought it was um, set. Uh, set by caller. Yeah, here we go. Assign, okay, so assign set by caller magnitude was the old method that didn't use tags. I have trouble, that doesn't seem to work for me anymore. So use this tag one, don't use the other one. And then we can pick that tag this one's not filtering by set by caller. Very interesting. And we can do one for strength. And we can do one for dex. OK. And now you see we get to set these float values. Now I need to get those from some, and then this can go and get applied. And then we can end the ability. Um, but we need to get those values from somewhere. So we've got get data table row is what we're going to use. And so what this will let us do is we can have a data table. And then we can look up a row name. We can grab the out values, and we can set them here. So we need to create a structure to create a data table. So we're going to come back. Um, I guess we can do it here. Uh, and we're going to create a data table. I think it's under miscellaneous. Data ta uh, you know what we need to struct first? We're going to create blueprints structure. And this is going to be equipment stats. Struct. Okay, and we got two variables here. They're both going to be floats. And it's going to be strength. And it's going to be dexterity. dexterity. Um, probably also want a variable that maybe says equipment item name. That might be nice. The name is probably also going to be in the um, as the key that we look up in in the data table, but um, yeah, it might be nice to have a nice name in there. Okay, so we've got that. Now I need to create a table, data table with it. So we go back to miscellaneous, and we create a data table. We pick our equipment stat struct, and we'll just call it equipment stat data table. Okay, we had a row. So, um, let's see. First, oh, we're missing something else. We don't know what uh, slot it is. So, this one's going to be great. Helm. Great helm. Ah, you can't have spaces. You can't have spaces in the, in the row name. So we'll basically just do a 
if we if we ever pull this one in and it's in this format, we'll have to see what we use for inventory item name over in over in OWS. But um, when we add an inventory, but uh, if we do, we'll just uh, remove white space. And let's say that the great helm gives us a three to strength. And then, um, yeah, let's create another one here. Light helm. And this one gives us, say, a two to dexterity. Okay. And um, the other thing we need is we don't know what slot. So, um, We need to know what slot. Let's go back to the equipment item struct, add a new variable. Let's see. I have not tried this. We'll give it a try. Can we use gameplay tags? It would be cool if we could. Let's give it a try. Um, equipment slot. Because then we could pull it directly from there and not have to do a, a lookup. Let's see what happens when we come over here. Yes. Equipment, slots, head. Equipment, slots, head. Awesome. So now, when we come over here and we choose Equipment Stats Data Table, and pull the Great Helm here to begin with. Row found. Row not found, we need to just end ability. Hopefully that's not something that can happen, but might. And then we'll break this. And this is where I need to make a change. So I had was going to create an effect for each one of these, equipment head. Um, but actually we don't need to do that. And the reason we don't need to do that is because I saw... There's another one here called Add Asset Tag. So let me show you what how that works. And strength here and dex to here. So you can kind of see what you can kind of see how it's setting these values dynamically before it uses it. But uh, what we can actually do here is come back to this equipment head slot. And we can actually just do equipment effect. And it should switch it over here. Equipment effect. Yeah. And the reason we can do that is because we're actually going to assign. What I was going to do is in this, in this effect here. I was going to come down and create one where each asset tag had added here for each one of the slots. Because um, I had what I have not done before is I have not used this add asset tag. Um, but the fact that it can do that, and we need to make sure we keep passing this. So what's happening here is the output of each one is being passed to the next one. So we've got to make sure it keeps doing that, keeps passing it until it gets to the supply game flow effect spec to owner. Um, OK, we're going to test this out. And what we're going to do is um, we're going to, oh, let's see, I'm trying to think the easiest way to test this. Um, OK, we're going to come into the character. And we're first, because I always forget this, we're going to grant the ability. So let's see what we've got. Um, okay, we didn't create any. Sometimes I create a. Uh, sometimes I create a function for doing that, but we're just going to use this one for now. Eventually we'll refactor. And this is the equip item. So we now got that ability. And then um, temporarily. We're just going to, for testing, gonna try to come up with a 
some key that's not being used, which is getting harder and harder. Um, one through zero is bound. Uh, I don't know if the plus or equals key. Oh, no, I, I didn't do what we wanted to. Key. Um, let's see. what other keys are being used. Let's see if we can find underscore. I don't think underscore is being used. So this is the one between the zero key and the equal plus equals key. Yeah, we'll try that. This is why you use input so you can remember where they're all going. So we're going to do a do, one, uh, do once. And then we're going to do try activate ability by class. And the ability is going to be equip item. That looks good, looks good, looks good, looks good. Okay. So, let's see. Uh, so we use the Great Helm. We should have 13 strength if it worked correctly. We'll watch this to see if it, if it kicks out. So we've got that open, it's 1010. I'm hitting the underscore key. Okay. After an strip. Oh, look at that. Starting strength after a knit stat strength. Interesting. That's showing 13. Okay. Let's try to figure out what's going on here. So one of the first things I do is I print this value because this tells whether it activated or not. The other option is to do the other thing I like to do is go into the ability itself. Equipment. And Quit. And then, um, you know, it might be it might be maybe not finding the row. Maybe I'm doing something wrong there. So we could also go here and say print string. This is the kind of stuff that I usually figure out in advance before I show you guys. Uh, let's see, print string. So we've got um, apply effect. So now we should be able to look for those in the log. Get an idea of what's going on. Okay, so I'm hitting the underscore. Oh, that was mob C1 that was getting that other message. Okay, so we're not getting anything on the underscore. Um... So there's one spot more we could have we could have failed at. This is the kind of debugging you have to constantly do. Uh, and we'll just say underscore pressed. But it actually it should have output this other thing, so I don't think it's actually getting to this underscore. Which probably means probably means that one was already in use. This is a common problem. And you see how they say consume input. So if something consumes it before. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's try another key. Okay, so no underscore. Uh, let's see what keys we got here. Maybe the slash key? Yeah, this consume input here means that it pulls it out of the uh, input buffer and none of the others, nothing after it. Once one of it consumes it, if it's getting consumed somewhere else, I don't know what would be hooked to underscore though. I don't know. We'll see if that's our issue. 
So now I think this is the slash over on the number keypad. Hmm. I'm not having much luck. Oh, actually, it's not. No? That's weird. Unfocused, lost. Ha! Huh. Usually I don't have this much trouble just getting it to, um, to call a key. It's already being used for stuff. Comma? Give that one a try. Starting to believe that's not the issue, but I don't know how it wouldn't get here. There's, uh, there's really no reason it wouldn't get there. And so, comma. There we go. Okay, cool. So, it said apply effect. There we go. We're at 13. Wow. Apparently there's a lot of other keys that are already being used. So there you go. You can see that it called activate, equip, apply effect, and you see it ran it on the client and on the server. And then because it updated the effects, it's also going to basically handle taking care of those stats on all of our proxies as well. So client's updated, server's updated, and all the proxies are updated because it was an effect, and the effect automatically... Um, the effect automatically replicates. Um, so that's pretty cool. So we got that. Now, there's a couple of potential problems. I have a feeling that in its current state, that if I run it again, it goes to 16. Well, that's not what we want. You can't equip two helms. So um, let's see. What we want to do. First, I don't need some of these. Eventually, you leave too many and they get annoying. Um, go back to our ability. And what we really want to do is make sure that we remove anything before we re-equip it. And so what we want to do is do a remove. So let's go to our equipment. And this will also form the basis of our unequip. So the first thing we want to do is come here. We have our equipment slot. And so the first thing we want to do is remove game play effect from owner with asset tags, right? Because we added the asset tag based on the slot. Okay, this is a, it says with tags. So we're going to have to do a make. Uh, I think it's this one. It's a single tag, yep. And we'll never let it go over one stack, so removing one stack should be fine, because basically now, before we add one, we always remove one. Therefore, we can never end up with two, right? It's just simple logic. And so we'll end up using this here. This here is also going to become our unequip when we create an unequip ability. Okay, so let's give that a try and make sure that that solves the problem. Okay, so we're at 10.10, I'm hitting comma. We're at 13.10, I'm hitting comma. We're at 13.10, see? So now we're removing it every time before we do it. So we're making sure that, um, we're making sure that, uh, that we handle that. So now let's go make an unequip item. Playability. go. Unequip item. And remember, always come over here. First thing you do, instance per actor, uncheck this, leave it local predicted. I'm going to come over here. I don't want that anymore. And I'm going to grab 
all this. So now it finds what it, what the slot was. Uh, yeah, so technically what we really want to do here, we don't want to choose an item. We actually just want to choose a tag. Um, anyway, we'll make this dynamic eventually, but we really just want to choose a slot tag because we're just saying, hey, what slot am I removing it from? For now, I'm going to hard code this to head. We'll come back and make that dynamic. Good, good, good. Okay. So we're good there. We're good here. Let's go back here and uh, we'll start by granting the ability. Wait. I put that on the. Ah. I put that on the event graph. I really want that on the input. I'll move it. Uh, so I'm going to come back up here. And we need to grant, unequip. One of the number reason, number one reasons abilities don't run is because I forget to grant them. <laughs> um, also, temporarily, if you're just testing something real quick, um, you can cheat. Go to class defaults. And if you come down to any of these abilities, one through zero, even if you're using them with a try activate ability, just dropping them in one of these slots automatically um, automatically uh, 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 grants them. Or you can just, if you're testing, just like find a slot here you're not using, drop it in 9 and press 9. Uh, we're not going to do that here. I thought about it. <laughs> okay, so we're going to come back here and I'm grabbing this, I'm cutting it, I'm going over to the input graph. where it should live and I'm grabbing this and I'm copying it and then we're gonna go here and we're gonna switch it to unequip and comma worked let's see if period works let's see if period Let's give it a try. And so here we go. We've got that. I'm now hitting comma. We're at 13. Hitting period. We're back at 10. And hitting period multiple times. Oh, actually period is used by something else. Character level increased. <laughs> Great. Okay. Not period. Um, anyway, these are just for these are just for testing anyway. Um, so that actually is is fine. But yeah, period apparently was used for something else. Let's um, let's go find what that is and dump it, just because it's going to get in our way in other cases. Um, first, we'll check the project settings. Make sure period's not assigned to any of these. Spacebar. No. So it was it was one that got hard coded. So we'll come back here. Let's see what we've got. T is hard coded. Period's hard coded here. Uh, so this was an example for leveling up. Um, we don't need this. We're using a different system. So. I'm going to grab this, I'll delete it. It was just in the starter project. And so now this will just run that. And again, these are just, pull these down here for testing only. Okay, cool. Uh, so what we've shown here is how we can use um, how we can use gameplay abilities to 
um, to modify the stats based on what we're equipping. Um, now, you'll notice there's an issue, and that issue is that we're not sending it in, right? It's hard-coded here, this slot's hard-coded here. So we need to make, we need to make that dynamic. Uh, but this video is running a little long, so I think I'm gonna do a part two. Um, so this is gonna be the end of part one, and in part two, we'll come back and, uh, and deal with um, making these dynamic and um, setting up uh, a better test UI. Uh, we'll do multiple items and multiple slots, and maybe we'll set up some buttons or something we can press or some drop downs we can use. This is what we do in our game, since we don't have an equipment system yet, is people can open up a dialog and start just picking what equipment items they want for testing. Uh, so I think we're gonna do that in part two. Uh, so until next time, see ya.